I'll be reacting to Osamake rom com or the childhood friend won't lose episode four. Be watching it from Crunchyroll's website, and I'll be starting my reaction in one zero go. All right, I'm pumped up for this. All oh, really, she'd have fucked up here though. It's not, uh, no way that can even be quantified as a dream. That is a nightmare. I mean, hey, at this point, anything you can do to get rid of some stress would actually be a welcome addition. I mean, I'm not gonna blame him for thinking that career wouldn't infuse, though. Bullshit! Woman, you have the perfect opportunity! <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Yes, she is. And Haru ain't a Baco. Well, I guess you could argue that. Uh, well, now she made the possibilities of her losing extremely high. You pretty much gave Shura a prime time opportunity of winning. Sheeta. Um, Kachi, you were pretty rough on, on your suit, John. I'm just saying, she was pretty rough. But at the same time, it's kind of Haru's, it's all their faults. No, it's all your three's faults, because Haru, he could have made his feelings more known. Towards Kachi. And maybe things would have worked out a lot more quickly. And then at the same time, you could argue that it might have been Shida's fault because literally the opportunity to win was in her lap. So honestly, they all have. They're all to blame. All of them. No one is an innocent party. They all fucked up equally, if you ask me. Well, no, I'd say. No, I would say she'd have fucked up more because literally a victory was in her lap. So if I had to if I had to be mathematical about this, I'll give forty percent of the blame to Sheeta, thirty percent of the blame to to Haru, and thirty percent of the blame to Kachi. You know what? Yeah, I'll split it up that way because from a ratio standpoint, it feels right. It feels absolutely right. As for who I'm going to root for, for those who are curious, I'm going to have to go root for Kachi now. Because what Shida did, you got to think, it's really messed up. I mean, she humiliating in front of school, and then afterwards she's going to be like, ah! She's probably going to future be... Hmm. Oh boy. Oh boy. I hope that you didn't do anything too crazy. What, is he gonna try to ex... I can see why Tzuziko did that. Damn! Three million?! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I mean, hey, there's worse ways of being, uh, of being known, though. At least you have the guts to confess. I'll give Mario that much. <laughs> that sounds like a total masochist. He was like, I want to hear her say no. The, I mean... I gotta admit, what the thing you could say is kind of a dickish move, though. You should have run it by our boy, though. Okay, that is... Okay, now that is a dickish... Sheeta, it's your fault, woman. Sheeta has no right of talking shit. Everyone else does, but not Sheeta, though. Not her! Who is this? Another childhood friend? <laughs> Wait, what? Whoa, um, she looks like she really desires n um, the D with the way um, he just showed up there all strong. <laughs> like I put those two in their place. Whoa! I mean, in the shooters, cause she has no right to be complaining about being thrown away. She's the one who threw away our boy out to the figurative wolves, and the moment he got rejected, so she that. Should really shut the fuck up. Huh? Oh. I don't think Momo cares about this. Yup! I had a feeling she was gonna say that. I'm not gonna say Nani all simultaneously. Uh. I think. Think about being easily bribed with food, though. Yeah, I agree. Maru is kind of stupid. Oh, I mean, I guess when you rationalize it that way. I'm like, I'm introducing all these new characters. Oh. Oh. oh boy. I just like how he's only staring at one thing. <laughs> I'm not gonna blame him for trying. I mean, Marvel's a warm blooded male. Damn, that's cold. <laughs> I wonder what's the bison lately. I've been hearing it not just in this series, but in also in Nagatora, where 
They just take a bit of Senpai and they like switch out. Wonder... It's been used quite a bit lately in anime. Man, I don't think that classifies as sexual harassment if you ask me. That explains quite a bit. Now, honestly, it's a Yuko that would make an amazing businessman with that type of mindset. That is a good question. But then again, we. Damn, these... <laughs> oh, man. Ah, damn. Talk about just breaking someone's expectations. That's actually really sweet, though. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> but the way she says it, though, it can make... Yeah, but she's saying it, it's giving a wrong idea, though. I mean, the thing about Kai is he's kind of right with what he said, though, because there she really could have went to the juggler and gotten our boy to fall for her, potentially. So she missed an opportunity there. I think that's what he was getting at. Yeah, I want, yeah. And I'm glad she's ru rubbing into Sheeta's face. Of all the women that deserve to have things rubbed in her face, it's definitely Sheeta. I don't know, I wouldn't blame him for wanting to be like, oh. Being all like a notebook when it comes to Sheeta. All I'm saying that, yeah, Maru could have handled, he can handle this thing better though. Like honestly, I know it was, he put his heart and soul into the confection, but. Oh! Okay, I think they're making Maru a little bit more pathetic than I really think they should be making him, if you ask me. Okay, yeah, okay, I do like this scene, though. My only so important. <laughs> what the fuck? Yo, okay. Like, I mean, that's a badass. I just wish, though, that... They didn't do our boy Maru that dirty though. I do like the whole I win book. Come on, making Maru into a monkey there. I'm like. 
I was like, yes. Cameron injected the side of fishing in front of people, but damn. It feels like the writers just took the balls that Maru had, got a knife, and just ripped it out in like so baby motion. And it's in that scene there. That's what it felt like to me. Like the casternizer boy. And part of me is thinking, what the hell happened to that Mara from episode? Well, yeah, I understand his confidence would be knocked a, would be knocked a peg, but shit. Hmm. Okay, this scene is good. Okay. Honestly... That's gonna be a tough question for our boy to answer. I think what he should have done from the get-go is just be a bit more wiser and he should have Okay, Momo's starting to creep me the fuck out. What the fuck? Okay, now I'm starting to understand why. Why he doesn't look at Momo in a romantic light, despite Momo throwing herself in front of him. Alright, at least he's asking the important questions now. Bullshit! <laughs> Bullshit! Oh my. Wow. I like I was just trying to pass off all these details. Just by being like, oh yeah, there's food! Huh! What does she mean by interrogating? But in saying that, that is some major dedication, though, I ain't gonna lie. I'm actually pretty impressed. Yeah, I kind of wouldn't mind seeing the backstory between these two. Feels like it'd be a lot of fun. Aww. We all know the money is actually... Oh boy, I wonder what it's gonna be. I mean, hey, when love is involved, anyone be hesitating. That's assuming that love is involved. Oh. Okay, what would she need saving from? Thought it was always because she may have an affection for her blood, but never mind. I thought it'd be something dark.
That doesn't sound like a bad way of living, though, if you ask me. Oh! Hey, this could be good for him in the long run. Oh, that's sad. When it comes to people not um, interacting with their family that well. I mean, it doesn't seem like he has much to lose. It's their business. Oh, it's the sisters of uh, Cheetah. Yeah, this feels like it's something manipulated. Oh boy. Drama alert. Bullshit on that. Really? Oh, that's too fucking convenient. I'm like, amnesia. Come on. Oh. I mean, I mean, shit. Last week was like the moment where I'm like, was she down like, yeah, I don't have any more good vibes about her. But damn! This episode just uh, giving me extra reasons to just root against Sheeta. Even more so. But then again, though, while I do want. Well, I do want. Could, um, I do want Kachi to end up with her boy to an extent. There is one downside about this episode. Mara really liked a backbone. Like, when he turned into a freaking monkey, it's like, bruh, have some self-respect, man. At least a little bit. Because uh, they try to have it up as humor. And they've been doing it now throughout the series, too, like, when those other boys in the back room were talking shit about him, and our boy did nothing but be a doorman. This episode is more of that. So it's like, here's the thing. This episode had things I liked, and things I didn't like, so this is what's going to make it really darn interesting to rate. Now, aside from what they did with our boy, it's like... Because I feel like... Oh yeah, naturally... Character regression was gonna happen. Considering the fact that... Yeah! It's a high chance of it happening after you get rejected and those kind of stakes. But the thing about this is... With the way they're doing it in this episode... It's like, who the fuck can I root for? And then there's a Momo who just shows up being all super clingy. You know she really likes the protagonist, just by the way she's in this episode. And I'm like, uh, her personality traits aren't that great. But then again, Maru's personality traits aren't that great either. It's like, fuck. But at the same time, I enjoy, the, I enjoy this episode. That's the thing. Objectively speaking, there are a lot of things wrong about this episode, but I'd be alive if I was like, yes! I didn't enjoy it because I fucking enjoyed this. But then my mind's all, 
thinking, no, nah, anime camera, there's a lot of problems with this. So, because, honestly, you would think Kachi would have picked up that that would have been a perfect time to win over our boy. But nah, she didn't go for it. She didn't go for it a bit. So that's why this episode has some downsides too. And I feel like this episode's just dragging the plot along. Just because. So here's how I'm going to rate it. From an entertainment standpoint, it is an 8 out of 10. From a common sense standpoint, it is a 4 out of 10. So I'm going to be in the middle. I'm going to give this episode a 6 out of 10. A bit above average. But objectively speaking, yes. The writing is a good. But fuck, it's entertaining as hell. But yeah, that's how I perceive it. I enjoy it, but the script is a bad, but it is fun though. <laughs> it's one of those guilty pleasures of the season, and I'll definitely keep up with it just to see how low it can go. Because come like amnesia, I hope Mara doesn't believe it. Who am I kidding? He's probably gonna believe that shit. And I can't wait, because we all know how this shit goes. Mara's a doormat. He's probably gonna believe this shit. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for this train wreck! Yes! But anyways, y'all. These are my thoughts on the episode. I'd love to hear your thoughts and how I feel about my reaction or the episode itself in the comments section below. Hope y'all rate the video, share it, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all later if you come back for more. But anyways, y'all. Thank you so much for watching my video and have a fantastic day, everyone. Bye-bye.